minutes since I've done this, people. Can we do this live chat? Give everybody a couple minutes. It's been a minute. I have not done a live in a, in a, in a bit, guys. Let's see. Live chat. The people that are here, can you hear me? Can you see me? I'm not that technically inclined, so curious about that. Hello, hello. Okay, got some people. Yes, hi, Matthew. Good, you can hear me. We'll give everyone just a little bit. Sorry for the late notice about a live. Um, it's been busy. It's been really busy. So in a couple minutes, I will um, get an idea when more people start popping on. Where is everybody listening, watching, watching? Where is everybody watching tonight? You hear my dog in the background. Poconos Mountains. I love the Poconos. Hello, Hideaway Homestead. Vanessa, what are you doing, cousin? That is my cousin, everybody. They started their homestead um, a little while ago. Got a YouTube channel going. Proud of them sharing their sharing their stuff. Hello, Tim. Let me see if I can do something. There we go. Vanessa, I made you a moderator just in case. Just in case. It's been a minute, like I said. Greetings from Georgia. Hello, Tyler. How are you? Hi, Greg from Denver. Tim, I know where you live. <laughs> Hi, Bama. How are you? Okay. So, yeah, it's been a minute. It has been a minute. I have not been able to do a live in a while. So, yes, we are going to, uh, I'm glad that tonight I finally have a couple of minutes, even though I really don't. We're in the process of spinning honey, which I'm sure many of you guys are probably already harvesting honey. Um, we are 30 frames in on our honey harvest, and there's a lot more that we need to do. And then I didn't even finish pulling honey. Let's see, can you guys see? I didn't even finish. I still have to pull, there's a few, so. Yes, the honey, I'm excited. So we're gonna definitely be putting our honey um, on our Etsy shop this year as well. I think that went well um, so while we're talking about that. Uh, I've had a few people ask about the, the Etsy shop. Um, it is, if you just type in the Honeystead, I think it's one word. You have an Etsy shop? I do have an Etsy shop. So on our Etsy shop, we have, we will be adding our honey. I am going to go back to the eight ounce bottles and also add in um, the one pound uh, bottles as well, 16 ounces. Um, my custom hive tools, yeah, we've got some really cool ones up now. So our, we'll have two different size honey bottles and I'm gonna do things a little different, I think on my packaging to help um, help with, thank you for putting the Etsy shop in there. Um, I think I'm gonna do a little something different when it comes to packaging. I think we'll be okay doing this. I would love to be able to strictly just do, do like, um, just do, uh, I would love glass bottles, but shipping is so expensive. Um, so we are using the BPA free uh, plastic bottles for, for our Etsy shop and I'll apologize for that. But again, it's the whole weight thing. Um, so, you know, that's why Misty B. Oh, do it. Become a beekeeper. Do the bee thing. If you, you are, do you have bees? You're getting bees. Get bees, all the bees. It's so great. Um, Oh, thank you. I am really trying to sit down. I think this winter I'm going to put together more of a certain videos for how to. I'm going to put in order. 
Um, I have also, there are some other conversations about possibly uh, like an e-course or information on certain conversations. Um, that'll be fun. I'm not normally a how-to, but I guess I kind of am. I'm more of like, a, this is what we do. So we're going to work on that. I promise I will definitely be working on that. Um, with beekeeping, the other thing that we have coming up is I think so. I think so. Um, uh, the e-course I think would be a good idea, you know, because I think it would be fun. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I'm planning, planning on a few things and kind of figuring out. Uh, I'd also, I've been approached about um, changing the YouTube to be able to like, if somebody wants to become a private member or I'm not quite sure how that works. I don't know if I'm there yet. Um, mainly because I'm just going to give you the information that I know anyways, because that's what type of beekeeper I am. And my thought is the information, it's nice to share because in the end goal, it helps us all. So, um, but, so there's some things. Um, what else do we have going on? I just saw the question about beekeeping in town you know you probably can there's a lot of people that actually beekeep on rooftops um don't have any problem with that uh i've have a lot of people that i know that have um beekeep in like neighborhoods more suburbs um they don't have a problem the only issue i would kind of have is just make sure people some people kind of freak out um, when they see a hive, but on the other hand, you know, you've got a lot of people that are like planting flowers and making their lawns pretty and, and this, that, and the other. So I have heard a lot of good things about planting or having bees in areas of population like that, because there's actually, you know, flowers and stuff for them. So I would not say no. Um, and bees are going to go, they're going to do their thing. You know, you put the hive there, they're going to fly around, they'll forage. So you don't technically, and I'm sorry, I'm on my phone because I don't have Wi-Fi up here. Um, so if you see me like, you know, look this way, it's, I'm trying to push buttons so that I can actually see the chat. And thank you, Quebec Homestead. Yeah, 40K. I still don't believe it. I'm like, what? People? You know. Um, which I am really honored about that. So I want to celebrate with all of you. That's why a live chat was like, we have to do this guys. Um, I have to actually like sit down and say, I'm coming up here. Um, and since we are doing a honey harvest, I'm going to have stuff that I can share. And I think the best way to celebrate is by doing some giveaways. Yay. So, um, yeah, we'll get on that here soon. I will be sharing with you guys. Um, going to start beekeeping in high desert next year. Any recommendation on a book for starting? You know, this is a really good question. Um, there are a handful of books that I do like. Um, the Beekeeper's Bible is a good one. Um, that's really fun. I like that one. There's even a, there's even like a, beekeepers, um, dummy, beekeeping for dummies, even though you're not a dummy, there's that, there is a good one there, but I do tell everybody to check out their local library and this would probably be a good time to do it. Um, because come, uh, fall winter months, that's when a lot of those books would be checked out. But the reason why I say that is because you can actually gather a few of them flip through them, read what you, you know, every person that has written a book, they have their own way of being a beekeeper. Um, yes, there's some things that are already pretty standard and laid out, you know, certain terms, technology, or not technology, certain terms and, and setups and all of that. Um, but I, I'm kind of one of those frugal, go to library, you know, see what, see what beekeepers, beekeeping for dummies. Yes, that's the right one. Um, but if you don't want to go spend a bunch of money on a bunch of books, um, you know, hit the library up. Also, 
uh, always check out what your local extensions office offers. That's a really good way to start getting into to beekeeping, um, mainly because that's going to help link you with other beekeepers in your area. Um, and also, you know, get to know what is, you know, what's happening in your area. I have a really good relationship with a lot of beekeepers that are in our area. A lot of them um, actually purchased nukes from us this last year. And so that was like such a blessing to see all of my all the little girls go off and, you know, make new homes and, and so far so good. But it's good to have that relationship and, and be, um, oh, that's gonna be, be humor and be part of the community. Uh, but yeah, it's, it is nice to see how things, and you'll see, you'll see that there's so many different ways to achieve the same goal. Um, but yes, libraries, it is a really good reference. And I mean, cause I picked up so many books, honestly, what I did, there are some books that I purchased that I'm just like, I'm not gonna, I don't, it doesn't, it's not hitting home. Like it's not giving me all the information. So what I found is just by going to the library and, um, and maybe one day, Andy, that might be coming too. Uh, we will see. What I really need to do is make like four of me and then I can do all the things that are running in my head. That would be great. If I could do that, then we would have a book. We would have like, you know, but yes, um, I have notes. I've been working on things. There's some stuff. We will see. Um, what else? Thank you guys for the congratulations. Uh, first year, new peeper, go! Three swarms, that's awesome. That is so exciting. Swarms are my favorite, um, absolute favorite way of getting bees. It's so much fun. One of the reasons why I really love catching swarms is most of the times when I get called, um, you know, it's from a person that they really, they have like, they, they're caring about this ball of bees, you know? So I really try to, to just have the conversation and educate them and make them feel like they're a part of this saving. Um, and I love it. You know, I absolutely love catching swarms, not just because of their free bees, but, uh, again, it's just another way of connecting with people. Um, I have in one of my swarm videos a few months ago, um, it's up there. Um, sweet family, got the kids involved, you know, and, and she got to, to learn a lot. And now I'm hoping to be able to kind of guide her through possibly her beekeeping journey next year. So uh, being a mentor and, and giving back, um, you know, I'm not the, know all beekeeper. I don't think I'll ever be the know all beekeeper. Um, cause we're forever changing. You know, there's things that are forever going crazy, uh, temperature, weather, all that good stuff. But not only that, but supplies and, and hive setups, like there are so many things that I want to learn. Um, you know, so yeah, I'll be, I'll forever be their student. So um, but showing somebody that when you're, when you have some experience and you're about, about being a beekeeper, um, yeah, that's when, you know, like, that's what you really enjoy. So, okay. I'm rambling now. You guys get what I'm saying, right? Maybe not. I don't know. I'm a little nervous. It's been a minute. <laughs> um, paper wasp nest. Ooh, no. Yeah, I know. I had to do that too. One of them almost got me. You bought, Tim, you bought some red wattles. That's fun. Um, Tom Seeley's book is, oh, I think I have, I think I actually have some of their, his books. Wholesome Roots. Hi, Rose. How are you? Uh, I want to make switch to horizontal hives next year. Yeah, do your research on horizontals. I 100% think that I really, my back is enjoying the horizontal hive. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed 
definitely enjoyed this horizontal hive that we we were gifted by a viewer um, which is again like such an amazing gift my husband was like there's a big box and I have no idea did you order something and I'm like no <laughs> um, so when we opened it and saw the horizontal hive I was so excited to put it together but it has been a really very nice hive um, I'm also watching the um, uh, Vino, 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 uh, uh, Vino Farms. Uh, his hives are so exciting. I don't know if you if you get a chance. If anybody is interested in seeing what he's doing, go say hi. Um, tell him I said hi. But um, obviously he's he has uh, beekeeping videos and all that. But he's designed a, a really interesting hive. And that's something that I want to do. You know, that's my my plan. I would love to be able to build our own hives um, from the wood that we mill. And, you know, I there's some things that I'd like to modify. You know, there's some things that I would like to do and maybe one day we'll see. Um, I I'm I would be definitely excited about that. You know, trying trying to be uh, inventive as a beekeeper. Oh, Green Acres. I have a video going up soon. Turns out I might have to. Oh, did you go to the doctors and get tested? Um, and I don't know if this is something that you might want to look at, um, but there's possibly um, a therapy, bee sting therapy that you could possibly do. I have not done that. Um, I, that's one thing that I am, I am kind of looking at myself to kind of get an idea and see so that I can help guide other beekeepers on, on what they might need to do if they're severely allergic. Um, you know, but again, I have always said like, I'm, I will put human safety no matter what above beekeeping. Um, I love my bees, you know, and I will wear my suit. I would love to be, there are some times where I don't need my suit, but I don't want to portray that bees are great, <laughs> as in they're not going to maul you. Um, I don't want to portray that, so I do wear my suit, and I'm okay with it. Plus, it's a cool suit. It's cute, so why not? Um, sells bee venom and capsules. Ooh, that's interesting. I would like to maybe look at that. Hmm. Um, how do we celebrate 40K? I have no idea. I've never made 40K before. Um, okay, I do want to celebrate and I want to give some honey away. I'm in the process. You will see a video coming up. Don't worry, I'm giving you a preview. Um, you'll see that video. So I've got honey bottles and I want to give away, I want to give away some honey. So. How do we celebrate? Um, like this, being in my favorite place, watching all the bees come home. That's how we celebrate. Okay, so, hold on, I wanna read this. If I switch a capped brood frame into another hive to help grow a smaller colony, should I shake off the bees first or is it okay to include some of the workers uh i would be i would be careful um i've done that a few times sometimes it's successful um but i've also had to where some of those bees have fought and they've actually kind of um they have uh killed unfortunately the queen that was a learning lesson i was like okay that's not gonna work um so you could shake you probably could be very careful. You could be very careful. Um, you know, just have a backup plan no matter what. Um, I like to slowly introduce colonies frames to each other, um, but I would, I would just watch it, and really check it. Um, the paper trick works really well. The newspaper tricks, but how how small of a colony are you talking about um okay let's do some giveaways oh my goodness we have like 99 people in here should i wait till we get 100 
No, I'm just still going to give it. Um, okay. Okay, let's see. I'm going to ask a question because I think that tends to like... No, I don't want to do that because I have a lot of new viewers. Um... Thank you, Patricia. Okay. I have a dog. Does, okay, I'm gonna ask some questions and I'm just gonna randomly do this. What is my dog's name and breed? And the first person that answers gets a bottle of honey. Okay, breed and dog and name. Breed of dog and name. <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be a Violet and a Mastiff. Ronnie, go ahead and um, Ronnie, B230. Ronnie, when you get a moment, email me and I, and then we'll be in touch and I'll figure out how to get you, uh, I'll get you a bottle of honey. Okay? Okay. All right. We'll give a couple minutes and then I'll ask another question. But there is going to be one question that I specifically need to ask just the beekeepers to answer. Because I might have another, I might have another, um, yes. We might have to give away a hive tool. Big dog, four legs. <laughs> yes. Um, Violet is my pup. I love her dearly. She has been, she's been great. Um, an absolute great farm dog. And yes, a hive tool. Uh, we've got, so back to the hive tools. Uh, we have got a few hive tools, uh, that are out right now. I've got a few more that I'm getting ready to put out. Um, they are, mm, I've got some really cool designs. Damascus design. That one was a really funny, fun one. Can't, can't ship honey to, I think I can ship honey to New Zealand. I should be able to ship honey. I shipped, I, I was going through my Etsy shop the other day and, um, I always try to make notes on my, all, like all the places that we get to, to ship, um, our salves or, or honey, um, or hive tools. And, uh, I have, we, I got to ship some some um, saps to Japan, which I thought was really fun. Um, Switzerland. Um, I know I've shipped hive tools to New Zealand. Um, gosh, I have a whole list of like all the different places that where we've been able to, to ship. So, okay. Um, best place for budget B gear. I... Uh, I like, well, I like Man Lake products. I do. I do like Man Lake products. Um, the quality of the frames and the boxes are really, really nice. Budget wise, I'm not 100% sure exactly where it's at on the totem pole. Um, but I have a bee, my bee guy that I do a lot of my purchasing from. And so what we do is I basically tell him what I need and he buys in bulk. Um, and so I get a lot of it at wholesale pricing, um, which is nice because we had to call him quite a bit this year. I was like, help, I'm running out of equipment. Um, so it is nice to be able to have, have a supplier that I can easily just drive over and pick up my stuff. Um, so for me, that beats it. But again, like I'm buying in bulk. So, you know, that's where, where I'm at. I have plans still to grow. Um, and I've, we've talked about the, the apiary setup and I know I've, I actually, these girls were supposed to, um, to a different location, but they're still here. And that's because I've really wanted to think about what, what my next plan is. And I have other plans on setting up multiple, uh, multiple apiary spots. Uh, I had a baby, my baby bee yard down in one of our bottom pastures um, this this past year, and that was okay. That was good. It worked, 
but I know that if I grow to the number of bees, hives that I'd like, I need to have a different setup. And as much as I love my hives here, I mean, like, I love it. Um, too many up here is not smart for the fact that I am really trying to also grow the majority of our, our produce. Um, so, so there's that, that we have to take into consideration. Um, so I'll be sharing that with you. Bees in bikini. Thank you. Uh, green acres. The piglets are adorable. They are so cute. Um, I have another video about the piglets that I have to share, but they are, they're doing really good. Mom's doing really good too. Um, let's see. Bee gear, you get what you pay for, exactly. Oh, uh, well, I mean, there are a few other bee company, bee suppliers out there that are pretty good. I think somebody asked about my suit and I don't, I'm trying to find it. Um, I am not affiliated with any bee supplier or, or um, really any bee stuff. Uh, the suit that I have, I do say is from um, Massive Bee Store, I purchased it. They have an Amazon store now, which is kind of kind of convenient. I I'm honest about you no, know, I don't want to be bought by anybody, so I want to be able to like this is what I use. I like it. If I don't use it, I if I don't like it, I'm not going to tell you because you know that's just me. Um, the hive tools. Let me go back. I don't know. I thought I saw the hive tools. So I'll talk about the hive tools really quick, and I don't have one here. Um, the hive tools that I have are on my Etsy shop. You can see that the, uh, designs that we do. So they're all right now we are strictly just doing uh, custom, not well, Cerakote is the, the coating that we use. It's a ceramic coating. It's very durable. Um, it's fun. It's extra, you know, I mean, why not? You know, it's, it's to me, I, I enjoy we enjoy being creative and we enjoy being just a little bit different. Um, so we're doing whole hive tools and we're doing half of the hive, like just the handle, just like what you would get at the store. Um, and we're custom doing some fun stuff and designs. I do have plans. I've had a few people ask about engraving. Uh, we did have an engraver at one point with everything that kind of has happened. It's just been easier just to, to do what we're doing. Um, right now, but we're always playing around with different designs and I'm always kind of asking like what is everybody you know, what other designs do you want and um, You know all that good stuff um, My son actually my my son actually has started to learn how to to paint and how to, to do the coating So he's actually helped out with that as well, which I think is really cool gloves. What do I use for gloves? um gloves I, sorry, okay, my gloves, there, I use two different ones, or whatever, I have a bunch, but we have, and I don't have them up here, um, the main one that I use is basically kitchen gloves, you know, they're just easy, and they're a little thicker than the nitrile gloves, when you had a really hard time, like when, if there was at one point a difficult well, actually, you can. It's still a little, di slightly difficult to be able to order um, disposable nitrile gloves. So we went with the thicker kitchen gloves. They were great, and I've actually, I've actually found out that the kitchen gloves, because they have the little grippy fingertips, um, for me, for my touch phone, I can take a picture with my gloves on. Which, if you're wearing the leather gloves. It's a little hard. Now, I've shared that um, most of the times what I'll do is if I see something or if I make no, I take a lot of pictures when I'm doing my hive inspections. Um, that's a mental note and it's just easier for me to go back. And so what I'll do is I'll take a picture and I'll say, okay, queen, you know, queen cup, whatever. You know, I'll make a note in my phone so I know check this colony, you know, in this amount of time. So I need to make sure everything is really good. Um, 
lambskins, they don't work very well. Also, the only issue that I have with the lambskin, which I have it, don't, don't, I'm not saying don't buy it. It is really good to have a thick pair of gloves, especially if you're dealing with a colony that might be a little on the spicier side. You know, I have, those are fun. Uh, the, my problem is my hands are the size of like, you know, a child. <laughs> so those gloves, which I have a pair, like, okay, this is going to be a little, probably false. I think this is a large, this right here is a large. This is my hand. <laughs> like, this is not my glove. Um, no, this is an extra, extra large. Just kidding. It's an extra, extra large. So for me, I'm going to do more damage with thicker gloves than, than what I would, um, if I, if I have something that's a little more fitting. Uh, the other thing that I found is garden gloves, regular garden gloves. You know, if I can find them, my, my size, they're perfect. Uh, these right here too. Um, 3M, 3, they're, yeah, they're pink, you know, Just whatever. I'm not a pink, I would like them to be yellow, but they don't make them. Um, but these are also nice because of the rubbery grip. And, you know, I use them for anything in the garden or doing anything. So, um these work and they're kind of rubbery, rubbery too. Uh, but the kitchen gloves are really, really cheap. So, um, you know, I'm all about that. <laughs> okay. Um, been stung. Have you been stung in your bee suit? Yes. So where I get stung is some, most of the times through my belly unintentional stings it's you know in my belly um, my if I'm like kneeling down if they're on the back of my leg um, it happens um, let's see but the suit wise for me um, I won't if I'm gonna invest investing in a suit is it is worth it um, you never know whether, and you might be a jacket type of person. I'm not a jacket type of person. I want to wear the whole suit. And the reason why is because 95% of the time when I'm up doing my hive, actually, I should correct that. Probably a hundred percent of the time when I'm up there doing my hive inspections in my fully vented suit, I'm wearing shorts underneath of it or a tank top, um, on the really, really hot days. I'll even wear a, um, hi bud. And the teenager comes. What you got? I was told you were at the pot curry, but you weren't. I was not. Um, okay, so fully vented suit. If you're gonna invest in something, I think a vented suit is awesome because you can wear tank tops or shorts underneath of it. Um, if you're, if you just get a jacket, you're still going to have to wear like, you know, pants or, or not. You just, that's all you, um, just wear a bikini. Yes, that would work as well. Um, is that for me? Did you bring me something? I made it. You made me dinner? I forgot to eat dinner before I came up and did my live. You made me a BLT? And cheese. And cheese? And mayonnaise. And mayonnaise? And tomato from the garden? Look at that. That's what BLT is. Thank Bacon, you. Lettuce. Do you want to say hi? Hi. No, you got to like, come on in here. Say hi. Nope. <laughs> Teenagers. Um, okay. What was I saying? Oh, hot days. Okay. Um... I don't have it up here. It is inside, but you can get them online. If you are prone to be, you're such a... are you going frog gigging? Uh -huh. 
every live. Okay. I'm gonna hide the keys to your four-wheeler. Oh. Yay. Now he left. Um, I'm a boy mom. It's great. Okay. So <laughs> if, uh, if you guys are prone to, um, I'll answer that in just a second. If you guys are prone to be overheated with, with high, with like your hive inspections, which sometimes I really am. Ah, it's, it's lovely. It's great. Get yourself a ice vest or a cooling vest. You can find them online. I know, or you can, you can probably make it. I think there's a way to make it. Um, I'm sure you could probably make it and just get a vest and like, sew in, ah, get a vest, flip it inside out. That's what you do. You get a vest, like a hunting vest, flip it inside out to where the pockets are on the inside, or maybe you don't have to flip it inside out. Anyways, um, get the cooling little, you know, little like lunch things put it in your pockets i have a cooling vest that i can get wet and i put it in the freezer um and it's great it stays nice and cool and then the other thing is like the cooling rag i'll, I'll wear around my neck um we're being inventive look at us but yes you can i would i would say if you guys are really prone to getting getting overworked also make sure to like know your limit know how many how much time like i have a rule we will do like four hives and then break and go cool down, get a drink of water, um, all of that. So, um, let's see. Um, when do you recommend requeening an aggressive hive? Um, as soon as you have an aggressive hive. Now, but that's just that aggressive hives have their bonus sometimes but knowing your limit on what type of aggressive hive you want to deal with. I did have to requeen one of my colonies up here and um, I'll, I need to do a hive inspection with you guys. Perfect. The sweetest little angel hive right now, you know, but they were like chasing me three, 400 feet, you know, if not more uh, chasing me. And they knew when I was out, like I didn't even have to be, anywhere near here they just and and it was perfect sunny day i mean i literally i i still joke about like i was ready to tell that hive that um to tell that colony that you know give it a taco until it's pretty you know kind of kind of style so mary you didn't have to do that thank you thank you so much um, I will eat my sandwich, but I don't want to eat in front of you guys because that would be, I will eat my sandwich. Um, thank you for the super chat, by the way. That was very sweet. Uh, just get up at 4 a.m., go out. Absolutely. Well, I don't like getting up at 4. I get up, if I were to do like a really good, really, really good hive inspection, um, 100% get up at like 5 try to be outside by 5 30 getting rocking and rolling the girls are pretty much starting to leave by like six seven early at least here um and it's not as bad so but sometimes you can't you know sometimes you have to like check in the middle of the day when it's beating down on you um any particular smells to avoid or use during your hive inspection. Um, I don't wear this, I think, <laughs> another TI moment. I don't really wear perfume. Um, I don't wear scented deodorant. And I definitely don't wear any, I don't wear anything like in my hair. Um, but I would say anything like super, super strong, just kind of don't, you know, don't do it, especially on the days. Um, I know a lot of people will like smoke themselves. Um, I don't, I don't, unless they're really coming at me, which knock on wood, we have not had to, to deal with that lately. They've been sweet little bees. My favorite part about beekeeping. Hmm. 
seeing other people become beekeepers. I like that. I do. I really like that. I think that um, just, you know, helping other people become beekeepers and seeing them grow and seeing them excited and seeing them asking the questions and seeing that, you know, the, I, well, what I don't like about beekeeping is some people will make somebody feel like they're not a good beekeeper, you know, or make them feel bad for asking questions that they really need to be asking. So, um, if that kind of like plays it together, but that's what I, I really, I do. I really like seeing other people become beekeepers. Um, I love when I get to bring my hive, uh, I have like an observation hive. I love when I get to bring that to the kiddos and I love the kids to see all of that. Um, that probably is my other second, third favorite is just to see their eyes and, and teach the bees, uh, teach the kids that, you know, about the bees, about how, um, just their inner workings, their relationship with each other. So it's very, very, definitely, definitely fun. Aw, thank you, Lauren. Appreciate that super chat. Um, yes, so lemongrass. Uh, so I don't know about lemongrass for calming for the bees. I do know that it will help if you use lemongrass as a, a lure, like a lure, lure, lure. To, to be able to um, catch a to catch a swarm in in like a box we've done that a few times like in swarm traps um, it definitely will attract what I like to use and I think somebody asked me this in my smoker um, so for my smoker uh, how I light my smoker and I don't know if I have the tote here I go out I, I collect. I think it might be outside. Um, we have a few pine trees that drop all their pine needles. The, not the little pine trees, like the long, I don't even know. I, I probably should know the actual name of the pine, but it's the longer uh, needles. Those are what I collect. I collect them off the ground and I'll just take them. I normally keep a, a basket here, but I don't know where it is at. I might need to refill it. Um, but that's what I use for my smoker. And every once in a while, I'll get a little fancy and we'll put long leaf pine. That's the word. <laughs> Thank you, Bowling Outdoors. That's the word I'm thinking about. Um, the long leaf pine works really well for, for the smoker. And um, Night Bees McKinney, thank you again. Um, okay. <laughs> Okay, this one is going to, okay, this is a question I'm going to ask my beekeeper friends, okay? Because this one is a, I'm going to do a hive tool giveaway. Not that I wouldn't give it to anybody. Okay, my beekeeper people on here or my people that are going to want, uh, you know what, I don't care. Beekeeper people or people who are going to want to be a beekeeper or people who are friends with beekeeper and they want to gift it to them. I don't care. Um, let's give away a hive tool. I have one that I'm gonna that I've really I really like. It's really sweet. It's a half hive tool, so it's it is uh, half. So the it's stainless steel, raw stain not raw stainless steel, and then the handle part is gold, and it's not put on the Etsy shop yet. So. You know, but it's gold and it has little honeybees on it. Okay. One of my first. Okay. 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 My. I have a colony that I rescued out of a wall. And we named that colony based off of the location of where we were able to rescue that colony out of the wall. And does anybody remember the name of that colony? First person that answers emails me and I'll send them that hive tool. Um, again, it is the older 
it's the old it's an old older video um i think i have probably i was looking back at my notes i think i have probably about eight descendants of that colony now um, that we have made more bees and we have actually we gifted that hive we did gifted a colony back to the house <laughs> is that a hard one oh my gosh <laughs> and i gave him back okay 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 um <laughs> you know the story okay this is a hard one and i did i gifted it back to the granddaughter and i heard just keep you guys updated that those bees are still doing really well so and nobody's got it yet it's a hard one. Ooh, ooh. Great video, but can't remember the name. I know, I'm sorry. I make you guys work. <laughs> Let's see how many people left the chat so they can go look and see. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you guys a hint. You want a hint? The name of the colony is a tree. It's a type of tree. About six left. <laughs> oh, Magnolia Manor. So Edgar, Edgar got it. It's the Magnolia Hive. Um, Magnolia Manor was the, the name of the house that um we were able to go rescue that colony and like i said we have made genetics genet lines and lines and lines of genetic edgar cheats no he doesn't edgar email me um email me when you get a chance and i will get your information out there and i'll send you <laughs> i'll send you that hype tool i'm sorry that was a hard question especially because i don't do lives that often i might have to turn some lights oh i just changed colors that's better Turn some lights on. Uh, congratulations. Um, yes, that was still probably one of my favorite. I actually, uh, we had to do, I was really excited. Um, I got messaged about another colony cutout and it would have been the perfect colony cutout to do. And I was so pumped, um, but they needed me there like that next day because the exterminator uh, was coming and I, I'm hesitant to like even pick up my phone to see because I said I couldn't come out um, right away. But it would have been such a beautiful colony to be able to rescue. So I'm kind of disappointed about that. Um, hopefully they found another beekeeper in our area. And you know, that's one thing I try to do. Like if people reach out and I can't, like I've got like a, like a beekeeper tree list of like other beekeepers that I'm like, hey, are you free? Can you go get these bees and save them? Um, you know, cause that's what we do. We look out for each other. Okay, let's do, uh, and just, a, okay, let's just do it. We're gonna do, let's do another honey giveaway. Um, oh, I have to think of a question. Hmm. Okay, let me think and I'll answer some questions. Um, somebody asked about queen excluders. So that's totally optional to you. I, I don't use a queen excluder. Um, my rational thought to why I do not use a queen excluder is um, the type of beekeeper I am. Um, I'm not necessarily a beekeeper for honey. So because I'm not a honey. Yes, I have honey. Okay. Yes, I have to, or else my colonies would be like, I would have to get a ladder to check them. Um, but I'm not necessarily a beekeeper for honey. Uh, I actually really don't like extracting honey. If you know, I really don't. I, it's actually, 
it's sad <laughs> to me, but I get it. Like I understand and I do enjoy honey. So yes, that's kind of why. Uh, but anyways, I don't use a honey, uh, queen excluder because I'm not in it necessarily for the honey. And by me not using a queen excluder, I'm growing bees. Um, my belief is because I am growing bees, you know, why would I want to limit my queen from where she's going to go to lay? Um, and also because of that, it gives me an idea on what, um, how much that I actually need to keep back for them, for the bees. You know, I, I know in my past videos, like I've shared, like how to make the sugar bricks and I, you know, I'm not a beekeeper that's going to tell you like, don't feed your bees. If you want to feed your bees, that's on you. Um, there have been times where I've had to feed my bees. There have been times where I've had to make sugar bricks. Um, there have been times where, you know, I really had to like do something because a late swarm has not, does not have the resources that they're going to need, you know, to, to see them through the winter. So, um, with that current moment, um, buying sugar in bulk with everything that's happened in the world might not be as easy for some people. Um, and you know, I don't want to have to buy like all the sugar to be able to support all of these bees, you know? So for me to, to not use a queen excluder, it allows me to actually leave plenty of resources for them to be able to see them through the winter and I don't have to feed. Um, so that's my thought process. Uh, in 10 years, I don't know, it might be different, but I like that. I think it works and I think it's less work, uh, you know, for, for me as a beekeeper and also for them. And I know what they're making is real. You know, I know what they're making is legit, you know? So, but that's just me. That's, that's how I, um, a bee cabin. Well, you're going to have to watch some of my videos coming up. How about that? We will see. Uh, do you and your family consume jars and jars of honey? Uh, we, we have, we do. Uh, I keep a five gallon bucket for the family a year. But that's, we, I mean, I really, we do. We keep about a five gallon bucket and, and I covet that bucket, you know, cause that's like, that's my treasure. You know, that's, that's our, that's our, in our coffee. That's, I do a lot of tea. I love, I love making, um, different, different teas and all that stuff, which again, I'm excited. We got some really cool stuff happening and, um, yes, definitely watch. Yeah. Honey and coffee. I know. Um, it's actually really good. It's a good way for you to, especially if you have allergy issues, um, it's a good way for you to eat honey from your local area. Get local honey if, if you have issues. I do say that 100%. But um, put honey in your coffee. I mean, it's it's actually really, really good. Um, and honey on everything. I found a recipe that I want to try. It's a um, tomato pie. But I found... Yeah, tomato pie. I know that sounds crazy, but we have a lot of tomatoes. So I'm looking at all the different ways that we can make what we can do with tomatoes. But tomato pie and then put put honey on it. Um, how do you store honey? I store mine in big uh, food grade five gallon buckets. Keep it in my, I keep it in my basement. Um, temperature's pretty good. I haven't had too much of an issue with it crystallizing. I mean, we go, we go through some honey. We definitely go through some honey. Yeah, bros, tomato pie. I was like looking at that. I'm like, I'm making that. And I have to figure out a way that I have, because I have a lot of honey and basil. And I'm like, I bet I could like do something really sweet with tomato pie. Um, and mead. Yes. Okay. All right. Another honey giveaway. I forgot my question that I was gonna ask you guys. Um, mm.
Yeah, I forgot. This is awkward now. <laughs> okay. Um, 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 um. I don't want to ask a B question because I've asked a lot of those. The answer is I don't know. Um, mm, I think I've already asked that. Did anybody from here go to the Tennessee Homesteaders of America conference? Did anybody, did anybody go there from here? <laughs> I'm gonna ask. Oh, oh, my mom, mom, you don't count. Where are you by the way? <laughs> my mom was supposed to. Okay, you know what? Andy, message me, email me. I'm gonna get you, give you a bottle, honey. Andy Care. Okay, you're welcome. Um, and uh, let's see. Okay, I have. Ooh, this is a fun one. One more bottle, okay? Um, thank you. All right, I have I have a flower that I have been really, it's like a viney, it's a viney flower. It's a flower that I've been really excited to grow um, in my garden um, in the archway. It has medicinal properties. Um, Ah, uh, Sheena. <laughs> Sheena wins that. Um, yes. Well, it's it's actually yeah. You're gonna win it. That's fine. Passion fruit, passion flower. Absolutely. Um, and the passion flower is something that I've been so excited to grow, and I can't wait to take you guys. Sheena, make sure you email me. And the passion flower um, is is uh, oh passion passion. Pasha flat and the incarnita is the variety. Yeah, Passiflora in the incarn incarnita. I'm probably completely pronouncing that wrong, um, but I have had that. We have uh, six plants right now that are growing trellising right now, and they just make such a beautiful little purple delicate flower. Um, not only do the bees love it. I mean, I walk almost. The other day, I'll have to, I'm going to post this picture, I think, on Instagram. A little bumblebee was asleep in the flower. Um, so the bees are loving it. And then also, uh, I really just, I, I can't wait to see it, like, all. You know, I want to see it. I want to see the dramatic effect, you know, of, of this vine and flower that is just gorgeous. Um but also because we are herbalist and because this is what we're doing and my mom is, she's not here with me, which she should be, um, that that's okay. She's, we, we worked hard today. Um, but it also has a lot of medicinal properties and that's something that we've, you know, again, like as a beekeeper and herbalist and what we're doing, I really tried to connect the world, you know, connect the dots. It's good for bees. How does it help the bees and how can it help us? Because I need it in my garden. Um, but yeah, that's something I am excited about. We've got a few good things really happening. Some videos that I am, I think it's going to be my next. Um, have you worked with Burdock Root? A hundred percent. I love Burdock. Um, absolutely. It's one, it's delicious if you ever get a chance to cook with Burdock. Uh, but we have a lot of tinctures. We have some Burdock tinctures that we've done. Um and the catnip flowers, yeah, they do. Um, all thank you, Mallory, for being here. I appreciate you being here. And um, do you have bee, any bee videos coming up? You guys should go check out Quebec Homestead. Go check out her her YouTube channel and uh, yeah, see what she's got going on. Actually, all of my moderators, they all have really good channels. Wholesome Roots, that's Rose. Oh, she's got a beautiful little family. 
see what they're all up to. Um, and of course, my cousin, Hideaway Homestead. Go see them too. Um, more memory card space. Oh my gosh, I know. I have to order. I'm, that's my problem. So, um, okay. So, what's coming up? Because we're at our hour mark. And um, thank you guys again for being here. Thank you for celebrating the big 40K with me. And I'm so excited for all the people that won on a giveaway. Uh, the Hive Tool and the Honey. Um, I wish I had a bottle right here. Literally, we are in the process of pouring that off. And, you know, so that'll be coming. Um, I'll probably have bottles coming out uh, hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. So all the, the ones who, who won, um, I have memorized and then just you know email me and, and we'll get on that um okay the things that are coming up homesteaders of america conference that's a big one i'm excited we are doing a workshop here on the farm um going to be all beekeeping we're going to be doing a lot of hands-on uh we're going to be doing some honey spinning so you guys can kind of see how we do it what what works for us um, the other thing will be getting people into the colonies. We're going to kind of break it up a little bit. Last, last time we had about 20 some people. Um, that was so much fun. We did lunch. We all hung out. You know, it was just a really good time. But we talked about hive setup. We talked about placement. We talked about uh, different style hives. We, I mean, we really, like, it was one of those. It was a big old conversation. Um, we talked about suits equipment, what to get, what not to get. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is definitely get in, get into the colonies, identifying structures, being able to have an opportunity to get into beekeeping um, and see if you want to get into beekeeping. You know, that's a big thing because beekeeping is so intimidating at first. Um, but once you get an opportunity to get in there, you're going to see if you really like it. So the Homesteaders of America conference, awesome conference, absolutely awesome. If you are interested in getting and being a part of, um, of that, uh, the, just check out Homesteaders of America and all of that information is there and you guys can kind of see uh, what else is in play and that is, yes. That is in October, and I will be talking about how we winterize our colonies and what we do, things to think about, things to you know take into consideration. Um, I'm also going to, I might have an observation hive for that day too. So we'll be, you know, again, we'll have, actually, no, I'm not going to have one. Somebody else's. That reminds me, I need to send an email. Anyways. So we've got a lot of fun things happening. The next video is going to be a very special one. Um, yeah, it's going to be a special one. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to you guys being a part of that. And then after that, you know, hopefully things will be kind of settled down enough and we will be able to kick off doing more lives. I was really hoping that we would be doing lives more often, um, but life, you know, life happens. So. Anyways, I'm going to eat my BLT <laughs> and I'm going to go chill. Um, so yeah, you guys have a good night. Thank you for celebrating the big 40K with me. I still can't believe it. I'm like, what? 40K? People want to watch me. That's crazy. Um, but you guys have a good night and uh, keep an eye out. I'll see you guys soon. I don't know what button to push. <laughs>